All right, I'm back with another fly tying tutorial. Today, I'm going to be trying, attempting, I'm gonna be tying a parachute items for you guys. Um, this is a size 12 hook, so it's big enough for you guys to hopefully be able to see it pretty good. I'm using, once again, the Rusty Brown string for my dubbing. I have the body color pale bluish gray, which I very much prefer. I have some post fiber. I don't remember what it's called, but it's just some white post fiber. Um, I like, since I'm using the rusty gray, the, uh, no, I'm using the rusty brown string, I'm going to use some brownish hackle feathers, so. It should all tie in in the end. It should all be color coded. And we're going to start by just, as per usual, starting out our string. And then I'm going to cut the end. I'm going to go all the way, make wraps all the way to the back end of the fly. And this is where I'm going to dub my string and then put the dubbing on the, the fly. So you guys won't be able to see it, but I just twist it on there. Pretty easy. And now, start making wraps. With the dubbing, I'm gonna tighten my dubbing. It stays nice and tight on the string here. I got tight wraps. No, that's probably too much. And now I'm just gonna pull off the rest of the dubbing. It's just waste at this point. And a couple wraps. Now, this is where the post fiber comes in. We're gonna make the post, which will eventually have the hackle wrapped around the post vertically up in the air and not around the eye by the eye of the hook like a normal dry fly. So I get the post fiber, I'm gonna cut off a little bit. Um Let's see, just like an inch or two. And don't don't go too little. Don't be afraid to put too much. You want you'd rather have too much than too little because you can just trim it. And then I lay it down on top. And then I wrap it down the middle. Mm, I don't know. I think I need more. I'm gonna put I'm gonna replace it. I didn't even follow my own rule. I said don't put too little and then I proceeded to put too little. Now I kinda went overboard with it. But like I said, I'm just gonna trim it up when I'm done, so it should be to where I need to be. Lay it down. Now I do a couple wraps to keep it down, and then we want it to end up pointing up. So I'm going to twist it a little bit. Then I'm actually going to start wrapping it. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to move the camera back a little bit so I can have some room to move in. As you can see, oh no, my wrap's going in. This is the tricky, a very tricky part of this fly is these vertical wraps and keeping them tight. And you want to have enough that the post is very, very stiff. You don't want a loose post here.
Now that we have a nice post bottom, we're going to do some wraps around it. And now come back towards the eye. And I'm going to trim like that. Now we have a nice post like that. And that's going to be very important. Having a strong post will keep the hackle supported. And it's basically part of what keeps the dry fly um, on top of the water is the post and the hackle. So it's an important part. It's, an, it's a tricky part, but some practice and you should get it. I'm just going to get out my hackle now. It's ginger hackles. And you want to find, like, it doesn't want to be huge. You want to find one that's long enough you can do a couple of nice wraps. And I usually, I'll sometimes end up trimming the hackle when I'm done. Like if it's too long and when I'm done with the entire fly, I'll trim it. So you don't have to worry about it being like too long of a hackle. So I strip off some feathers to give me a good tie in point. I'm just going to tie it in in that feather little quill little feather strand oh no don't want to wrap that way and wrap all around we don't want that feather coming loose that would be a very bad thing to have happen now I have my feather tied in. I'm going to wrap my feather around the post. I'll show you. Hopefully I can get it right first try. And then the feather starts to make, as you can see, it fans out. And it makes like an umbrella. I like to think of it of an, um, as an umbrella. Protecting our dry fly from the water. Now that we're done. We're going to make sure not to let go of that. Don't want to let go of that uh, feather. We want to tie it in. Because you can lose all your progress if you let go of that feather. That's really annoying. Trust me. Now, trim that feather up close. Do not cut your string. Cutting your string is a horrible, 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 horrible idea. And it can easily end the construction of a good fly. Now, I'm just going to whip finish it like usual. And I'll show you the final product after I whip finish it. Hopefully, successfully. And the only thing I want to note here is that when you whip finish the parachute atoms like this, you try not to get your nice parachute, your nice umbrella. Try not to get that in the whip finish. So try to, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Try to go around the feathers if you can. You can get a couple stuck like I'm doing here, but you don't want to get a ton stuck because that'll make an unbalanced dry fly and that's not what we want. Now I'm just going to trim up some of the hair hanging down by the eye because we want all the hair to be up. And there we go, guys. This thing looks really good. I like the way it turned out. There's the final product. It's got a nice parachute. I could probably trim up the post a little bit. But I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it for buoyancy. If you want to trim up the post, feel free. Um, subscribe if you want some more fly tying tutorials. And also, I'm going to be fishing with this fly. And hopefully catching some fish on the Pudding River here. So, check out. I should have a vid. Hopefully a video put out with me catching some fish.